In the last couple of videos, we talked about equivalence relations, which are ways to generalize the idea of equality between objects that aren't necessarily equal. Now we're going to generalize the idea of order with partial orders. What does it mean for a set, a matrix, or some other mathematical object to be less than another one? Partial order is going to be any relation that is reflexive, anti-symmetric, and transitive. So notice this is almost the same definition as that of an equivalence relation, except we're requiring anti-symmetric. This relation is only going to flow one way, in other words. Uh, if r is a partial order and the pair x, y is an r, then we write x is less than or equal to y, or if it's necessary to distinguish the partial order, we'll put a subscript r under it. Now this little symbol is kind of hard to draw. You can kind of draw it like this. Uh, sometimes I'll just do this if it's clear that the relation that I'm talking about is not the regular less than or equal to relation. And the idea here is that all of these are properties possessed by the relation described by x is less than or equal to y on the integers of the real numbers. And so whenever two elements are related by a partial order, we're going to think of the first element as being less than or equal to the second element. So let's see some examples. We have the relation given by E being a subset of F on any collection of sets. And remember when I write a statement like this when I'm, and I call it a relation, what I mean is the set of ordered pairs where the first and second object satisfy the statement. Uh, I also could talk about the relation on a set of Boolean matrices where the first element of the pair is less than or equal to the second element of the pair. Remember we talked about bo one Boolean matrix being less than another. Uh, we could also talk about the lexicographic order of strings. And this is just alphabetical order, right? We uh, look at the first character of a string and uh, if it's less than or equal to the first character of another, we say that the whole string is less than or equal to, um, for example, the word apple is less than or equal to the word banana in lexicographic order. Uh, we could say that the word uh, apple is less than or equal to the word arm because the first character is the same, but then the second character is less than the second character of the other word. Um, and we could do the same thing with numeric strings, right? We could uh, have the string um, 1, uh, 0, 2, 1 is less than or equal to the string uh, 1, 0, 3, 8. All right, so let's take a more specific look at one of those partial orders, we're going to draw the digraph for the partial order given by the subset relation on the power set of ABC. So as always, it's a good idea to write down the power set you're working with. We have the empty set, we have the set containing A, we have the set containing B, uh, we have the set containing C, we have the sets containing AB and AC, BC and ABC. And so this empty set is going to be related to all of these things. So I'm going to put the empty set at the bottom of the digraph. And then I'm going to put the singleton sets above it. So I have A, B, and C. And we have the sets A, B. A, C, B, C, and then the set A, B, C. All right, well, uh, the empty set is related to everything, so let's draw these arrows in. And then we have, um, let's see, we have A related to A, B itself. A is related to ABC, A is related to AC, uh, B is related to AB, B is related to BC, B is related to ABC, C is related to AC and BC and ABC, and then you have 
them related to themselves as well. And then all these sets are related to themselves. And then everybody's related to A, B, C. This is awful, right? This is terrible. This is completely unreadable. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that, right? Transitivity is a very restrictive condition, right? You get a lot of extra pairs because of transitivity and reflexiveness. Um, and so if we know already just by looking at the fact that it's a partial order that we're going to have transitivity and reflexiveness, then maybe we could omit some of these edges. And so that brings us to the idea of a Hasse diagram. We're going to say that anytime x is less than y in a partial order, with nothing in between them, then y covers x. A Hasse diagram is a graph where we draw an undirected edge from x up to y, if and only if y covers x. Now we're going to infer transitivity and reflexiveness, and we're going to get anti-symmetry by requiring the edges only point upward. So we're not going to draw these loops. Uh, if we have an edge from the empty set to A and from A to AB, uh, then we're not going to draw this other edge between empty set and AB. It's going to be implied to be there because we know that every partial order is transitive. So let's draw this Hasse diagram for the same relation. We'll see how much better it looks. So once again, we have the empty set. We have the set A. We have the set B. The set C. We have the set AB. We have the set AC. We have the set BC. And we have the set ABC. All right, so I'm going to get lines from the empty set to A, B, and C flowing upward to imply that the empty set is a subset of these. But then I'm not going to draw one from the empty set to A, B because it's implied by the fact that I have one from the empty set to A and from the empty set to the set containing A and B. There's, there's no need to put a line here because it's implied. Uh, and so I'm going to put these edges here as well. And that's it. This nice cube looking thing is the Hasse diagram for the subset relation on the power set of ABC. All right, let's have one more example. I'm going to consider partial order R. And this time, instead of giving it as a rule, I'm going to give it as a set of ordered pairs. So we're going to have. A going to itself, because it has to. A going to the element G. B going to itself. B going to C. B going to D. And B going to F. C going to itself. And also to F. D going to itself, to C, and to F, E going to A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, F going to itself, and G going to itself. So your first thought might be that's a lot of pairs, and like I was saying a second ago, partial orders kind of artificially fill in a lot of pairs. Based on reflexiveness, we have to have all of the diagonal pairs. Then based on transitivity, anytime we can eventually get from x to y, we also have to include the edge from x to y. So we get a lot of artificial pairs um, from the transitivity and reflexiveness uh, restrictions. So we're going to draw the Hasse diagram for this partial order. And I need to figure out kind of what element is going to go at the bottom and what elements are going to go at the top. So thing to keep in mind as you do this is that the upper elements are related to fewer. And the lower elements are related to more. We don't have to do this every single time we uh, make a Hasse diagram, but it's not a bad idea for this first one to write down all of the elements of our set, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 
and then the number of times it is the first coordinate one of my ordered pairs. All right, so A is the first coordinate twice. B is the first coordinate four times. C is the first coordinate twice. D is the first coordinate three times. E is the first coordinate a whopping one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And F and G are only the first coordinates once. So that tells us that E is going to be our lowest element because it's related to the most things. And that F and G are going to be the upper elements because they're related to the fewest things. So I'm going to put an E at the bottom of my Hasse diagram, and I'm going to put an F and a G at the top of it. All right, so then I look and see what else is pretty low, and I see that B is the next lowest, and it's related to C, D, and F, but it's not related to G, so I want to put it over on the side of the Hasse diagram where F is. All right, so B is going to be related to E. D is related to C, but C is not related to D, so that tells me that D should be the next element in the diagram, and that C should come after it. I don't have to give them this zigzag pattern, I just did it to make it look interesting. I could have drawn these in a straight line if I wanted to. Next, A is only related to itself G, so A should be on the side of the Haas diagram where G is and then F and G are only related to themselves. So we're done. This is the Hasse diagram for this relation.